morning, everyone. Good morning. Great to see all of you here today, and welcome to those joining us online. Please be seated, and a special welcome to all those who are visiting with us today, and we hope that you will sense the Lord's presence here with us as we worship Him. For our gathering course this morning, you may remain seated as we sing together, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth.
All right, what is it? It's a, a heart. What do hearts represent? Love, exactly. So, if we think about this as love, and I've done this before, but I don't know if any of you have heard this story. And when we give love away, what is those happiness? So right now, there's four corners on this page of love, right? All right, so I'm going to cut one off, and I'm going to give it to Kai. I'm giving Kai a piece of my love, all right? So now if we count the corners, what do we have? Can you count with me? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there must be a mistake. Okay, so we just gave some away, but there's more. All right. Let's cut another corner off. All right, I'm going to give some of my love to Everly. All right, now let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's funny kind of math, isn't it? We're taking things away, but it's getting bigger. All right. So I'm going to to Caleb. All right, now let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's something funny going on here, isn't there? The more love I give away, the more I have. So I've given some to you. So now we're going to count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is the coolest thing, isn't it? The more love I give away, and I could keep cutting pieces off and keep giving it to people, and every time it's going to increase. So when we give love away, do we have less love? More love, exactly. The more love we give away, the more we have, because love is one of those things, the more you give away, the more you get back, because the people that you love, love you back. So it's very cool that you think every time we give love away, we have even more love to give away. It's one of those amazing things that God has given to us. The more we share it, the more we have ourselves. So let's pray and thank God for his love. If you can say after me, dear God, thank you for today. Thank you that you love me. And help me remember the more love I give away, the more love I have. Please continue to bless me and watch over me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Great. Thanks. You can keep those. That's you there. You remember that I love you. <laughs>
with each new day as we confess our sins and mistakes to God, he forgives us and gives us a new beginning and a fresh start. Thanks be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for the assurance of his love and forgiveness. Amen. And I invite you now to turn in your pew Bibles to Psalm 19, which we'll read responsibly, and Tim is going to come forward and lead us. to read it carefully, to interpret it correctly, 
and to apply it willingly to our lives. And we ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, and we're reading from chapter 14, verses 13 to 21, and you will find this on page 16 in your pew Bible. Page 16 in the New Testament section, and we're reading from Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 13. And here we read, Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. These are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The passage we just read from Matthew chapter 14 is known as the feeding of the 5,000. Other than the resurrection of Jesus, the miracle of the loaves and fish is the only miracle that appears in all four of the Gospels. Clearly, it's significant that all four included the account of the miracle, which points us to the fact that obviously we are meant to take notice of it. And although the miracle itself is significant, what leads up to it is also significant in what it teaches us. In the account, huge crowds have followed Jesus out into the countryside to hear his teaching. Evening falls and everyone is hungry. And the disciples urge Jesus to instruct everyone to go to the nearby villages to get something to eat. Jesus challenges them by saying, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. Did you notice the disciples' initial reply? We have nothing, they say. Nothing? Nothing except five loaves and two fish. Um, that's not nothing. But therein lies the problem. The disciples look at the meager amount of food and immediately assume the task is impossible. They don't consider possibilities. They don't ponder other options. In fact, rather than look for solutions, they make excuses. In Matthew's Gospel, they claim they have nothing. In John's Gospel, Andrew says to Jesus, What are five loaves and two fish among so many people? And in Mark's Gospel, the disciples say it would take a year's worth of wages to buy even just bread for all the people. They assume whatever they have won't make a difference, that the task cannot be accomplished. It's as if they are saying, why bother to try? We're a lot like the disciples at times. We tend to minimize what we have to offer. We underestimate its value. We say we have nothing to offer, or that what we have isn't enough, or we hide behind saying, I can't afford to. We think somehow it lets us off the hook from doing what we can with what we have, but it doesn't. Jesus makes it clear in our reading that we're to offer what we have and let him multiply it. 
Just as he did with the loaves and the fish, Jesus took what was offered and multiplied it so that a few loaves of bread and two fish fed more than 5,000 people. It's the multiplication factor. And it all starts with us and what we are willing to give. Jesus often used examples of people who gave everything they had. The widow who gave her final two coins. The widow who used the last of her flour and oil to make bread for Elijah. The two parables from last Sunday where the man sold everything he had to buy a field and the merchant sold everything he had to buy a precious pearl. They are all examples of people who, with faith and trust in God, gave up everything knowing that God could and would multiply what they had given. But Jesus doesn't ask us to give up everything. He just asks us to be willing to take what we have and use it to make a difference. Like the disciples, we often hide behind the claim that we have nothing to give. But even if you literally have no cent, not a cent to your name, you still have something to give. You can give of yourself. You can give of your time. What we give, God multiplies. Fun fact and some trivia for you. Did you know that some scholars believe the reason that we use X as the multiplication symbol in math is because an X is also known as the St. Andrew's Cross, and according to the Gospel of John, it was Andrew who brought the little boy and his loaves and fish to Jesus and began the whole multiplication. So you can tell people that now. <laughs> in God's economy, what is given is multiplied and blesses beyond what we can imagine. For example, recently we were collecting funds for Syrian earthquake relief. People made individual donations of $10, $20, $25, and a few gave more. But when it was all totaled, we had collected $2,345 for Syrian earthquake relief. The money was wired to Syria. And a few weeks later, we received photos from Syria, from Huda's street ministry, and we saw the groceries our donation purchased. Each one of us gave very little in comparison to what we each have, but what we gave was multiplied in its usefulness. Our small individual donations put together multiplied their value, and from our one church family, 153 families were given food to sustain them in the midst of the rebuilding of their homes and communities. It's an example of the multiplication factor at work. Multiplication has power. Jesus takes what we bring, what we give, what we offer, and he multiplies its impact, its effect, and its usefulness and influence. That's the power of multiplication. So often, we think we can't make a difference, and so we don't even try. But we can make a difference. We have seen time and again how we do make a difference. Jesus wants us to look beyond what we think we can do and accomplish and let him show us what is possible through the power of the multiplication factor. Mathematically speaking, multiplication is repeated addition. So, for example, if you each bring one new person to church, our congregation doubles. And if each new person does the same, it would mean our congregation would double again. Imagine that. Like the disciples, we are so often focused on what we can't do that we fail to see what we can. We're so convinced we have nothing to offer that we don't offer what we have. God doesn't expect us to do miracles. That's his job. He just asks us to be willing to do what we can and leave the rest to him. And the miracle of the loaves and the fish demonstrates that he can take even the most meager offering and multiply it. 
When it comes to faith and trust in God, it's not complicated. It's basic math. Fear divides. Selfishness divides. Greed divides. Sin divides. But love? Love multiplies. Sharing multiplies. Kindness multiplies. Generosity multiplies. Faith multiplies. God doesn't work in division. God works in multiplication. He asks us to be willing to offer what we have and then watch what he can do with it. Amen. And as we think about how God multiplies what we give, let's sing together, Come Know My Joy.
But I want to ask you, I, I know it's easy to say, oh, we don't have to go, they won't know. <laughs> but please show your support for us by showing support for the people that we have invited to come fill in for us during our absence and holidays. And we have the list there. You've got a great slate of preachers coming. So, um, yeah, I, I encourage you to attend and support all those who are coming to lead worship in our absence. And just know that we'll miss you, and you'll certainly be in our thoughts and prayers as we take this time of, of rest. And we want to gratefully acknowledge that today's bulletin has been generously donated by Lester and Lois McFadden in loving memory of Lester's brother, Neil, who passed away August 9th, 2012. Thank you both. And as we prepare for prayer, Susanna is going to come and sing for us. us to work for you in this world. 
and help us to remember that you will always take what we offer and multiply its usefulness and impact. Loving God, we pray today for our church family, for health and strength for each one in body, mind, and in spirit. We pray for all those recovering from illness or injury, for those who are awaiting the results of medical tests, for those receiving medical treatment. Please bless and strengthen each one. Lord God, we pray, especially this morning, for Joanne McRae and her family as they mourn the passing of Joanne's mother this past week. Please comfort them and fill their hearts with happy memories. Lord God, we pray for our community, our province, our nation, and the world. We pray that as we seek to do good and make a difference, you will multiply our efforts and their effectiveness. We pray that those who are hungry will be fed. Those who are in need of shelter will find safe, secure places to live. Those who live in fear or uncertainty because of war or strife will have peace. And Lord, we continue to pray for a peaceful end to the war in Ukraine. Loving God, you have promised you are always with us, always ready to guide and direct us when we turn to you. As we begin this new week, we pray that you will help us be willing to follow you in all that we say and do, and that you will give us the grace to admit when we are wrong, hearts that are willing to forgive those who have hurt us, strength when we face temptation, courage when fear overcomes us, and faith when we experience times of doubt. Help us to trust in you more, Lord God, and please multiply our faith. For we ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And our closing hymn this morning is Let All Things Now Living.